can we use double integrals for volume calculations volume determinations yes we can i am mr ish and i'm welcoming you to this video here serving as a introductory video to this concept of using double integrals for volumes and let me show you two examples example number one let's start with this right here x is equal to r a vertical line which has been delimited here by y equals h you know what we're looking at here something which would become a cylinder rotation around the y-axis how do you know how to set up a double integral it will all depend on the nature of your circular disks and by that i mean the orientation of those disks and in which direction they are integrating if i'm looking here x equals r i know in this direction is my radius therefore circular areas will develop in this way if i were to integrate them from this upwards lower limit to upper limit now you know i'm looking at everything with respect to dy since i'm looking at that the radius or my relevant equation should be in the x equals format keeping that in mind knowing that i'm looking upwards let's set up our double integral i have this limit here in terms of x you know it's going from a zero up to r because this is r comma zero this point right here will be r comma h i have an integral here with respect to x it will look something like this now watch everything lower limit upper limit are not going to deviate in any way so there's really not much you can do other than just put that but now watch what am i integrating up from lower limit to upper limit i'm integrating an area that's what i am but what's the area it's basically a pi r square i gotta bring the pi r square and this is how i'm gonna do it right here this captures my pi r square the area the cross-sectional area of this slice which will integrate from a lower limit to an upper limit 0 up to h dy that's your volume integral which will capture the volume of what would have developed had you completed this rotation and you know what it was it would have been a cylinder and that's what it would have developed into and you know this right here is my y-axis here's my x equals r my y equals h my y equals zero your x-axis that right there is it this would have been the region which was being rotated to develop that cylinder this right here is our double integral and you'll see it to be accurate if you do the antiderivative you're getting an x r and a zero with a pi and you know this right here is a square complete this you'll have a pi r square this pi r square can push out right over here what you will see is pi r square and then zero to h with respect to dy pi r square you have a y antiderivative h and a zero your volume will here become a pi r squared h and that's the volume of a cylinder volume is equal to pi r squared h and this example here comes to an end you can see exactly again how everything has come about when i'll show you the next example then we can bring all of this into closure by means of these two examples obviously we'll be looking at more examples in future videos example number two rotate around y-axis i have drawn two points i connect them what do i have here r comma zero zero comma h you know when we rotate this around the y-axis this region of space which you see to be the case you will develop a three-dimensional cone a right circular cone because it will have that right triangle in there but this is what we're looking at the volume of this now what will be my integral and again i'm looking at this direction for a certain radius and my circular disks are going to go from a lower to an upper limit everything here with respect to dy eventually therefore my equation must be in the x equals format but what will that equation be it will be the equation of this line you know you've seen something like this before y is equal to minus h or rx plus h that's the equation of this line or segment to be more clear so for x you will have here y minus h times minus r over h but if you shuffle everything around because of this minus x here is equal to h minus y times r over h that is the equation of this line which will now integrate by means of a double integral from a zero up to this what is my double integral zero this right here would normally have been an r but simply because we have to track this line we cannot include the r we must include the effect of that by means of that equation r over h times h minus y with respect to dx which will integrate upwards with respect to dy but first you have to 
bring in the circular cross sections, the pi r square slices, as you remember, it's always pi r square. This is my pi r square, which will integrate from a zero to h dy. You can integrate this very easily and you will see it to be one or three pi r squared h will be the volume. From here, you've got x as your antiderivative. You can open this up. You'll have a r minus r y over h zero. You have a pi and you have all of this squared. When you compute this upper limit, lower limit difference of the two, you're still looking at this r minus r y over h whole square, which is what it's going to be pi r square plus r square y square over h square minus 2 r square y over h. This here will now serve as your integrand for your dy integral. For your dy integral, 0 to h pi and dy. You can integrate this and you'll notice that to be the case. It's a polynomial integral integrated bring in the y variable then in your y variable you bring in your h bringing in the zero is irrelevant you solve this all the way through these terms here will cancel the only term which will exist will be this right over here and that will give you right here the end result so keep in mind what i've shown you over here double integrals can be used for most but not all volume determinations as you would with the single integrals but as a closure let me show you what we have talked about in terms of a summary procedure in summary our integral has been something like this a to b with respect to dx this right here was your dx integral integrating with respect to dy but we had to square it to get the pi r square in effect and then bring it through the third dimension which gives you your volume here's your integral right here but this was everything assuming where our circular cross sections were integrating upwards from a lower limit c to an upper limit d along the y everything could have been in the reverse and i'll show you examples in the next video where everything can be in the reverse and that would be something like this you are looking here again from a to b but here with respect to dy again capture your pi r square which is needed because the pi r square is what will integrate the area the cross-sectional slice the particular aspect over here you need to be concerned with is now the dx is being followed through because you are looking at something like this from lower limit c up to upper limit d your slices are in this direction and they're going horizontally here your everything is going vertically and that's the difference you'll see here between the two cases all of this to be seen in the next video until then thank you have a great day